and 77 and start working towards the going between the name and formula of our simplest substances ionic compounds. So this term ionic it is the fancy term for anything that we refer to with the term salt. So ionic compounds are salts. They are held together by ionic bonds. And what happens is that a metal atom gives an electron, so it gives valence electrons to a nonmetal atom. So there is a transfer of electrons. And because the metal atom gives away one or more valence electrons, we would no longer describe it as an atom. So it becomes a metal cation. And it gave away electrons, so the positive metal cation associates with the anion. The nonmetal took on, gained the valence electrons, so the negative nonmetal anion. So the positive cation, the negative anion, they associate to balance out their opposite charges. And when they associate and balance out their opposite charges, they end up forming a neutral compound. So all matter is neutral. Now, ionic compounds, or salts, they exist naturally around us in the solid phase. That's their natural state. Okay, so let's start with the naming and formula process. So we're going to start with the formula to come up with a name. These steps we're going to utilize for all different types of going from the formula to the chemical name. So here we go. The first step is to match each partner's symbol, so it's element symbol, to the correct element name. So I'm going to ask you, please don't guess. Use your reference tables and you can match. You have a full list of element symbols with their names right next to them on your table S. So please use your table S. And then what you to finalize the name is adjust the anions ending to IDE. So let's take a look here. So we have this chemical formula YBr3. So our first symbol is the Y, and it functions as the cation because it's first. So chemical formulas, the way that they're written, symbol to symbol, left to right, is cation followed by anion. So when we go to table S, we find that Y stands for yttrium. And then BR being the second symbol in the formula, it functions as the anion. BR, according to table S, is bromine. But we have to adjust the anions ending to ide. So that means that instead of saying yttrium bromine, we have to eliminate the INE and replace it with an IDE. So the chemical name of YBr3 is yttrium bromide. Changing the ending, it'll take a little work. But once when you adjust the anion's name to end with the IDE, it should be pretty easy to say. If it's not easy to say, then maybe the adjustment isn't quite right. So let's take a look at the next example. We have MgO. Mg, according to table S, stands for magnesium. O stands for oxygen. And because oxygen is the second partner, it's the anion, so we need to adjust the name oxygen to fit the anion name. And so, magnesium, and then think about it, is it oxide, oxygenide, or oxide? 
So out of those, if you eliminate the Y-G-E-N and replace that with the I'd, it becomes really easy to say. So magnesium oxide. Moving on to the next one, we have CSH. So CS, according to our table S, is cesium or cesium. I've heard it said both ways. And H stands for hydrogen. And now hydrogen, H being the second formula in the name, it represents the anion, so we have to adjust its name. So hydroide, hydroxide, hydride. So the name adjustment is you cross off letters and you replace the crossed off letters with IDE. So the best one here is to cross off the OGE, the O-G-E-N, and replace that with the IDE. So cesium hydride. Notice there is no X in the name hydrogen and the replacement ending has no X in it. So you cannot say hydroxide. That is something that we will get to. Last example here, NAP. NA is, stands for sodium and P stands for phosphorus. Phosphorus, P being the second symbol, it is the anion, so we need to replace, we need to change its ending. So phosphoride, phosphide. So phosphide is easier to say, so that's what we will go with. So sodium phosphide.